Hey everybody, Tech here with another Amiga video and in this video I'm going to be looking at the HC533 accelerator card for the Amiga 500 and 500 Plus. There's been a few questions and queries about this card on Facebook groups and Amiga forums so I thought I'd do a video and give you a bit of an overview and my experiences about this card. The card fits inside one of these, an Amiga 500 or a 500 Plus. I owned a 500 back in the day which I got rid of a few years ago regrettably. This particular model was given to me by my friend Annan as an early wedding present and um, I fitted the card inside here. To fit an accelerator card onto an A500, you can either attach an expansion to the side port here or pop up the CPU and fit an accelerator card inside. Uh, there were loads of expansion possibilities for the 500 back in the day but even in 2018 there's still quite a few so that's that's saying something I, I, I reckon um, the card came out in April time and it's sold by Sordan on Sordan.ie it has a 68,000 CPU running at 33 megahertz um, the original CPU inside you Amiga 500 just like you guys know is running at 7 megahertz so there's quite a bit of a speed difference it's got 8 megabytes of RAM as well as an IDE controller built in so you don't even need to upgrade your kickstart ROM. I did miss out on the first batch that came out but I contacted Pete just to let, just to ask him to let me know when he gets a new batch in and he did in June time but I missed out on that batch as well because uh, I was on a holiday with my girlfriend so it's her fault. I did eventually get one in late June time but um, I did get around to playing with it until probably August time. So I'm just going to open up the Amiga here and let you guys see what's inside. So this is my A500 Plus open up. I've got a couple of RAM upgrades here, a couple of A512 stacked together. That gives me a total of 2 megabytes of chip RAM. I wanted this for certain WHDO games. The card itself fits directly over the 68000 CPU socket. So what you have to do is remove the old CPU. You can do this with a flattened screwdriver. Just very carefully apply some leverage, do it from both sides. Pop up the old CPU, then push the card in its place. You've got some extra RAM. That's 8 meg of fast RAM. Here we have the Motorola 68000 CPU that runs at 33 megahertz. 40 pin IDE connector, which I've got a compact flash card adapter going into. The card also has an onboard SCSI controller. It's very handy if you're wanting to run a Kickstart 1.3 or 2.0 ROM which doesn't have an inbuilt controller. Um, it does also have a jumper to disable this controller. So if you are running a ROM like a 2.05 or 3 or above Kickstart, and you want to boot off the native device driver you can do. You do have to push out a couple of capacitors though, um, just bear that in mind. Be very careful when you do that. There's a capacitor here and there's also one beneath the card. You can't quite see it because the card's covering it. So you have to bend them out of the way before you can fit the card. Okay, let's go into this info, see what we get. sees my 8 mega fast room. Let's do a speed test. That's 3378 dry stones. That's me in the red compared to the other models. Apparently I'm more than two times more, nearly three times faster than this standard A1200. I'm going to run a few versions of Frontier Elite on various models of Amigas so you can see what the differences are going to be. At the top we have my A500 with the HC533. Bottom left is an A600 equipped with a Fury accelerator that has a 020-33 MHz CPU and bottom right is my A1200 with a Magnum 030 running at 50 MHz. Some of you may know that the Magnum A1200 accelerators were a clone of the Apollo cards. 
The videos do go out of focus a little occasionally, so apologies for that. It's not the actual game footage, but rather my camcorder not focusing. There doesn't seem to be much in it between the HC-533 and the Furrier, but take note of the landing sequence. I think the A1200 is smoother, but that's to be expected with a 030 running at 50 MHz. It's a bit more obvious later in this intro when you get the explosions. The A500 is a bit slower when it comes to the scene changes too. What would have been a good test is if I picked a fight around a spaceport or space station with the local police. With a kitted out ship like a Cobra Mark III, get loads of police vipers, interceptors sent out and dogfight them all. That would have been an awesome test and it's what I used to do when I used to play this game on a regular basis. But I don't have any save games with a kitted out ship. When it comes down to value for money, the HC-533 is very reasonable. You've got an accelerator that gives you more speed with a faster CPU, lots of RAM to play WHD load games, the option to connect a hard drive, compact flash or SD card, and you don't need to upgrade your kickstart version to boot off it. Just a few things to bear in mind though. I wanted an internal accelerator card because I felt it would be tidier. I didn't want something to be sticking out of the side of my A500, however it does mean it's more effort to add files to my storage device, so there is an advantage of having an external expansion. With my A600 or A1200 I can transfer files via the PCM CIA adapter, but you don't have this option with an A500. Also make sure your PSU has enough juice. I initially had some issues making full use of this card. It would occasionally crash if I was using any more than 2 megabytes of this card's fast RAM. It turned out that the power supply was at fault. As soon as I swapped it over with another PSU, it worked perfectly. Here comes the explosions. It's definitely smoother on the A1200. But like you can see, there's not a great deal of difference between the HC533 and the Furrier on the A600. It's definitely smoother on the A1200. If you want something faster than a stock A500 with a bit more RAM and the ability to boot up a hard drive, this accelerator is definitely worth considering. I hope you like this video and if you do, please do like and subscribe.